Welcome to Keep What You Earn, your judgment and jargon-free zone for entrepreneurs of all levels. Get ready to learn how to scale your business, save money in taxes, and create a business that grows your wealth. If it feels like the financial side of business is like eating your vegetables, well then think of this podcast as the ranch dressing to make the process a little more enjoyable. My name is Shannon Weinstein. I'm a CPA and business owner on a mission to simplify money and empower others through knowledge. I hope this episode inspires you to take action, but remember that the information we share is for educational purposes only and is not individual tax advice. Now that we got that out of the way, let's start the show. You know, even for seasoned, technical or technology savvy people, AI, ChatGPT, OpenAI, all of what happened over the past nine months to a year in the development of this technology is just astounding. And we haven't even scratched the surface, in my opinion, of what it's capable of. And we haven't used it or applied it at its capacity for what it can do for us as a species, the human race, right? Business owners, entrepreneurs. And I am so excited to try to bring more content to you around AI and how to use it. And one of the ways I'm going to do that is bring my friend Jim Carter on today. And Jim, now I'm going to read his bio, but more than what he does, he's a friend. He is always thinking of others, always acting in service. And I'm really excited to share more content of his with you. I encourage you to give him a follow at Cause Hacker on all social media platforms. He's just wonderful in how much he gives in terms of knowledge and just in service. So with that, I want to introduce you to Jim Carter. As a seasoned founder, Fortune 15 consultant, and AI strategist, he has a successful history of scaling seven-figure businesses in tech and in content. He specializes in AI and advises brands on leveraging content and technology for growth and mentors entrepreneurs through the Fast Foundation's Mastermind. With his passion and expertise, Jim simplifies complex challenges, empowering entrepreneurs to harness AI in their everyday operations. This is so crucial. I love that he mentions everyday operations because we tend to, I guess, overthink how to apply AI in these spurts, right? It can do this one thing for me. It can do this other thing for me. But what I learned from Jim, both through this interview and in our conversations that followed it, I am just blown away by what this can do for my business, what it can do for your business, and what it's going to do for our clients. So I encourage you, take some notes, start thinking creatively on how you can leverage this technology, and let's dive into my interview with Jim. Hey, Jim, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Shannon. Of course. Could you just introduce yourself to everyone listening and tell them who you are and what you do? I like to consider myself a recovering software engineer, but really my name is Jim and I, I love technology. This is interesting, evolving industries that I feel like this is the perfect moment to really, really talk about how it can affect both our personal lives and our business lives. So I've just, I've been in tech entire professional career. I started really early hacking together Frankenstein computers, you know, from parts I could find and source to convincing my parents to, to get DSL and high speed internet before we could afford it. And that's a whole other story. But yeah, just, I followed that passion of building things. I wasn't really great with my hands in terms of like a blue collar job or it was like a plumber or like something where there was that kind of a build, but I loved the idea that I could actually build with software. And when I found like my joy of software engineering, I really latched onto it. And I love that I could just create something all from lines of code. And that really kind of, that propelled me in a way of thinking big, come up with creative ideas and spent about two decades being a software engineer. And the process, uh, I've been happily married for 15 this year, 15 with, with my beautiful wife, two daughters, 11 and 12. And... I really just enjoy thinking big about how technology can add more value to our lives. And I've really put a spin onto how that can also add a positive social impact to the world. And that's really sort of my niche. That's where I love focusing more of my time and finding opportunities to support small business, growing businesses, larger companies, and really is where technology can help us thrive. I that's, love the, that. that's the non-monologue edition. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I absolutely love that because you connect it back to social impact. You connect it back to like a greater, a bigger picture, a greater good. Right. And, and could you just share with our audience who don't know you? Cause I've known you for like four years now 
And I know so much about you that my audience doesn't. So I want to just ask you about your little bit of your background because you are on Instagram, you are cause hacker. And there's a reason for that name. And there's a reason like in, there's a lot of social impact in what you do. So if you could kind of lay out for our audience a little bit more about the social impact factor and what you're doing. Yeah, of course. I'm an Eagle Scout in the Boy Scouts of America. So I, I grew up with a mindset very focused on service, you know, back to community and country and uh, also back to family. And really like the reverence piece was very big. The service piece was very big. And over the years, I tried to not lose that. At some points I did. And then when I found my way back, I just found so much more joy in the things I was doing. It was a simple choice. It was if I could focus on anything, I would love to support not just small businesses where I could see the the tangible impact of, of what that's happening, but just right to nonprofit organizations and for purpose organizations. And, you know, I'm, I'm a certified B Corp founder with one of my past ventures. And I just I try to keep finding opportunities to mix that back in because everybody wins when you're that focused on one particular thing. And the story about how that whole cost hacker thing came around is we lived up in the Bay Area for um, just about a decade, a little under it. And, you know, I was commuting in nonstop every day. And there was a day where I remember I got off of BART, which is the mass transit up in San Francisco. And I saw the sign and it, I can't remember. It was probably for like Cisco or something, advertising something that they were doing with a massive marketing budget. But it just said the words, this is the land of startups. So start something. And that didn't have a direct tie to where I was going with it, but it got me just thinking I was already working in startups. I was already thinking like that, but maybe I wasn't thinking bigger. I realized I was in this environment that was so, so focused on the startup culture that if I was ever going to do something that really mattered, why wouldn't I be taking advantage of this time more than ever? Just, just full on it. So that really got me just thinking bigger in what I was doing. And I started to just really adjust my mindset for working more towards social impact companies and how that saying goes when, when you're ready to receive it, it comes to you. Well, I started putting that out there and I started having more of those conversations and that led me down this path of really trying to fine tune what I do for positive social impact. And as simple as that was, I just love showing up that way because it's also a reminder for me that if I ever feel like I'm losing my way, I know how I'm showing up. Therefore, that's the kind of stuff that's gonna come back into my life. Yeah. And, and like you said, there's, there's no shortage of things that you can do with your skill set. So being able to actually focus and say, I, I'm doing it with this particular objective or I'm doing it with this in mind is really helpful in keeping you on that path and make sure you're accomplishing your goals too. Because there's so many different things that we can do to get distracted, especially in the ever evolving world of technology, where it feels like there's a new, I feel like that, that dog from up, like squirrel, there's like a whole new thing we can do every five minutes to, to build our knowledge base. And that's what we're going to talk about today is AI, which is like the hot topic this year, you know, ever since around Thanksgiving, when I heard about this, this GPT thing that was coming out last year, it's just been, you can't get away from AI products, AI conversations, AI in the news, and, and you leaned into it really well. And I want to talk about, you know, the, like your interest in it, right? So your ability to see, okay, this is, this is big. Like when did it kind of hit you the impact that this technology was going to have? And what do you think that is? How would you actually define it? Yeah, it's a great question. So just timeline to, mm -hmm. to think about it. You're absolutely right. Right around Thanksgiving, around November of last year. So 2022 open AI, which is a private software company gave us what their beachhead, which is they called chat GPT. It was their software to be able to access what they're doing with AI. And they did it in such a, a nonchalant, such a, such a, just like, hey, hey, here's a preview. Check it out. You know, there was marketing behind it and there was internal buzz, but nobody saw it coming. And, and I say that relative to, let's just say like Instagram announcing threads, which just came, which is like, you kind of saw it coming and then it was massive. This was such a, a beautiful masterclass on how to actually release something that speaks for itself that it kind of, it took our breath away. And even me being a tech guy who understands the way this works, I was still sitting back in my chair with my jaw on the floor, like, wait a minute. First of all, this is free. Second of all, they are just opening it up so anybody can do it. 
Third, they're giving developers access to the APIs, which mean you can immediately start building on this technology. Oh, and by the way, nobody knows that this exists yet. <laughs> it was it was almost incomprehensible to those of us that kind of live in this software and this, you know, Shannon, you're, you're progressive with what you do. Like you still lean into new technologies and things like that. But so many of us get stuck in just what we know and we're not really thinking what's next. This took all of us back and all of us by surprise. So just kind of th think about that feeling of nobody really knew what was going on yet, yet we had this incredible power and it didn't make sense. You know, everybody, well, I've heard of AI, but what is AI? Is ChatGPT AI? Like, you know, we have all these, these conversations and questions. And I, of course, started using it because I followed the tech stuff at the time I was sending out tech tips and I saw that roll out and I didn't. I didn't even take it seriously until probably mid-December because it didn't really dawn on me just what we were delivered until I started seeing how many more people were coming into it and, and, and making sense of what that could do for us. And then when it hit me, like a lot of the other tech pundits and everybody else who's following the industry, we were all just like, wow, where do I start? And why haven't I started yet? <laughs> so yeah. really, it was like, that's when it kind of hit. And the time that I really started speaking more publicly about it with Fast Foundations, we brought back those in-person events last year. So our next in-person event was then in February of this year, 2023. And RT, my business partner and I, we just knew we had to show this to everybody. So I gave a main stage presentation on this and, you know, just blew everybody away. And the conversations were great. And I, when I saw in-person how everybody reacted in that room and the wheels spinning and the, the thinking big, somebody actually created a new business concept with it. It just, it really was like, that was that tangible moment where I was like, yep, this, this is what I've got to focus on. And that, that was a catalyst and kind of like a, a linchpin at the same time for me to just be very resolute that this was big, not just for small businesses, but for everybody. Yeah. And then at that point, now it's like, there's no looking back. And a lot of people still don't even know what ChatGPT is and, and what it is, or is it AI or is it a thing of AI? So I'm, I'm happy to, to explain that some more to really dive into more detail. Yeah. But I just want everybody to know that if you haven't tried this yet or anything AI yet, you're not behind, but you still stand the risk of falling behind if we don't get curious or want to take some steps to start experimenting. And that's really what I hope we can really dive into today is how can somebody feel really good about wanting to experiment and not doing everything the way that they've been doing forever? Yeah. And you described it so, so perfectly in that, like nobody saw it coming and we didn't know what it was capable of. Like we hadn't really imagined this and this so fast. And it's kind of like what, when you were describing it, I was trying to find a good example. And I said, it's like handing somebody in 1992 an iPhone. It's kind of like, it, I feel like we skipped a step. Like we skipped a few chapters. <laughs> You're absolutely right. You know what I mean? Where you look at it and go, I'm, I'm, I'm overwhelmed with what I can do with this. And it was, there was not like a, in most technologies, like look at the iPhone iterations, for example, there's marginal gain of function. Like there's a marginal, like step-by-step, -step, like, oh, and then you can take pictures on this phone that you've been carrying in your pocket. Right. And then you can take video and now you can post on social and now you can do this. And I feel like we've eased into this like gradual transition into the world we live in now over the last maybe 20 years but I feel like this was 20 years in a day. It was just like, whoa, whoa. Like, like it just went, it was like, let's just skip all those like iPhone one to 16. <laughs> you, you're absolutely right. It's a, it's the perfect way of thinking about this. And, and the context of that is AI is not new. The initial thought train, the ability for a computer to think it's been around since the sixties and you know, the real experts, the real real experts, they're the pioneers. They're the ones that have been doing this for 50 plus years. And you likely have AI happening in your life more than you realize. And that's the beauty of it is it's already integrated into our life, right? The, the simple reason that when your iPhone suggests applications that you might want to open and it's correct, that's AI. Now, you, you can confuse it or also summarize it as like algorithms, right? Because a lot of it is very algorithmic based. But the same way that Netflix really starts to suggest things that you want 
or, you know, like all of these opportunities that you think feel a little bit magic, AI is in that. The difference is now we can control that. We actually get this ability to be able to create that magic and we don't have to hire a developer. We don't have to have an entire engineering team. We don't have to pay for the infrastructure. We don't have to build terabytes, petabytes, all of the stuff worth of data just to make sense of it. That's the jump, right? So it's that feeling of, wow, I had a flip phone. Now I have an iPhone again, but advanced to the point where now it doesn't even take that much of an investment. Remember, it was free. They gave yeah. us a free preview and it's still to this day is free. I pay the 20 bucks a month for it because Me I too. use it every day. But even if you don't want to pay for it, it's free. Imagine if when the invention of the tractor came out, everybody's like, oh, no, I just, I don't know. And you know, you had to do this big investment. Imagine if you just got a free tractor, would you not want to use it to make farming better? When the calculator came out and it was super expensive and we didn't use it. Well, imagine if you just were given that or you had that ability, you could just go pick one up and you could start using it and playing with it. We're at that same crux of trying to make sense of it, but realizing that we have it available. It's a shame if we don't use it. I agree. And if you're not using it, someone else is. And that's the other thing too, is if, and like you said, you don't want to fall behind, but also it will become, I mean, I just, I remember, I think it's our generation really and older too that really remember this. Anyone who grew up with the internet, it's a little bit different. But when we we're younger and we had the family computer with the floppy disk and then it was the AOL and then it was the internet and I was learning how to Google things. And then I started using it to do schoolwork instead of reading encyclopedias anymore. I've seen the evolution. I feel like I've seen so much evolution so quickly in my lifetime that this feels like one of those milestones. This feels like, okay, we're never going back. This is going to change things forever. Like it's just, instead of searching for something, it will just give you the answer. Like it won't tell you where to find the answer. It might just give you the answer. And it's, it was just a whole new concept for a lot of us. And I'm, I'm curious about your sort of like your outlook on it and the usage for it, because let me start with this. I feel like personally that I know it is powerful. I know it is capable. I've heard so many people say, oh, chat GPT can do insert here, right? I'm typically, I'm pretty progressive with technology. I sit behind it and I go, I have no idea what to tell it to do. I'm overwhelmed with like, what can it do? It's not instinctive yet to when I'm doing things to think that it can do it for me. And I would love for you to sh shed some light on the use cases or the examples in business ownership of how we can apply this technology and not let it create fear or overwhelm, but how we can actually harness it and use it to our advantage. Yeah. And the easy answer to that, which is both right and also not fair, is in almost every way. And, but I'm, I'm not going to take that route. The route that I want you to actually think about is where do you want to be greedy? It's an interesting thought because as a business owner, and I, I believe most people listening are, are business owners or they have side passions or they're trying to find their way to continued growth to be able to do more of what they love. Well, what's the quickest path to doing more of what you love? It's getting rid of the distractions. It's getting rid of the grunt work. It's getting rid of the things that stop you from doing the things that actually matter, right? So for all of the the financial professionals that are on here, how many times do you find yourself setting up the same spreadsheets? How many times do you find yourself writing the same functions? Yeah, of course you can copy what you had before, but what if there was a way to get into that that much faster? You could move on to things that, sh that brought you more joy. How many times do you do the same or similar types of data investigations and want to create charts and lookups and personalize it for your clients or whatever it is that you're doing? you know what it is that you need to do as the professional. But the time that it takes to execute that is that's really that pivotal change. So now, rather than having that hold you back and saying, you know, I can only take seven clients with the time that I have because of all the things that go into what I do. Well, what if we make a robot do the stuff that takes that much more time and you fundamentally can serve more people and to the title of your podcast, we keep what you earn before having to go out and make more of it. So I am starting to use it, thinking about it in ways where it's like, how do I want to be greedy? You know, I, for, for the most part, I like to 
honestly and humbly say, I'm a pretty selfless person. I put a lot of other people's needs before me. That's the way I grew up. That's just my style. So this is giving me an opportunity to say, you know what? I know that sending marketing emails matter. That's how I get my message out. That's how I continue to update people. But if I'm not going to share that because it takes me too much time and I don't want to do it, how do I make it a different idea? How do I flip that mindset to actually want to do it? So you better believe that I now use AI to help not only produce my podcast, but to write marketing emails, to repurpose, to cut social clips, to reduce grunt work, to create graphs, to work with charts, and even just to help me get creative or be like my another business consultant. It, it, there's no wrong way to use it. You just have to keep finding the ways that it'll add more value to your life. And when you think about it like that, the beauty of what chat GPT gives us is we can do it in conversation form. Mm. And, and that's the biggest change. Rather than feeling like you have to know code or hire a developer and have them figure it out, it's no longer like that. You're just, you're asking a smart, let's call it a search engine for the information, but you can take it a step further. Now you can get that data back in the way that you truly want it more than going to a Google search and it's more of a ping pong game. I have a question, mm -hmm. it gives me an answer. I pick a result, I don't like it. I go back and I search again, I pick another result. Now I like it. This is different. You can ask for that information and you can say, you know what, I'll put this in bullet point form. Translate it to Portuguese. Translate it into three languages and put it in table form and give that to me. And it'll do all of these things. And there's no wrong way to approach it. It's whatever you want to get out of it. And, and thinking about it that big and realizing that's available to us today for free. I'm going to keep saying that. That's where it changes everything for us. And then I sort of give people the space to say, how could you be more, but more greedy in your life? How can you reclaim time, effort, re-resource all the effort that maybe your team is putting into something to give them higher value work? That's where it gets really powerful. And I've said this too, in the context of specifically accounting, because that's my background. My biggest fear with this as a tool, the way you've described it, my biggest fear is that accounting firms and firm owners will use it to open capacity and then fill that capacity again. Basically saying, we're expecting you to work 60 hours a week still, just on different stuff. Instead of the opportunity they have in front of them, to change how they fundamentally create their work culture and to eliminate the need for these crazy busy seasons, these 80 hour work weeks and the grunt work that quite frankly, our upcoming generation won't tolerate. And it's a really interesting, I've talked about this with accounting firms specifically. This is a very unique context, but you know, you've got these bigger firms, these I banks, these, these old school, you know, haze your new workers. They work crazy hours, right? They work into the night and I'm going, this is an opportunity for you guys to make a decision. Like, this is an opportunity here to utilize a tool like this to open the capacity and let it be capacity <laughs> or to actually fill it. And I think that ever since we had like the 40 hour work week and we have created this sort of level of expectation with work, I think this could change the whole game if we let it, if we are willing to kind of like what COVID did to reset us a little bit in our routines, letting use the use of this tool start to reset our behaviors in a sense of, do we have to work this hard as humans? Can we let the robots do what they're made to do and not, and not try to fill it, not try to replace it again? We have like, now I can, now I, I can do more. My point being, not do more. What if it just means you get to have more choices? What if it means you just get to get more time back, like you said? And I don't think that conversation's happening enough. It's about how much can I do in less time? But what I'm worried about is what people are doing with that time they're getting back. It's a great thought and it's to be determined. And right. it's up to us about what we are going to do with it. Some will find more value in their life and, and enrich it in one way. Others will make more money. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't think anybody will squander it if they're forward thinking enough to be able to use it. However, it's up to us to pay attention to try stuff right now. And the big question is, do you want to try those experiments, which likely can only add more value to your life now when the competition is lower? Or do you want to be outpaced by those that are already doing it and going to do it and then realize that you don't have the ability to catch up? 
Yeah. And that's the biggest thing. You, you had mentioned this before is if you're not doing it, somebody else is going to. And one of the best quotes that I've seen floating around the internet right now is AI won't replace your job. The person using AI will. That's exactly where I wanted to go next is this fear around AI will replace my job. And this sort of thought, I, I just want your reaction to folks who are approaching AI with a sense of fear that somehow their job or their business or their livelihood is in jeopardy because of this tool. Well, I'm, I'm just going to say it the way it is. We should be, a, I don't think we should live in fear. Mm. And McKinsey and Company, the really big yep. firm, they actually just this last week, I'm writing about it in my next newsletter. They just released a big like the economic potential for what generative AI and everything has to stand. And they flat out said AI will automate about 30% of work hours by 2030. Think about that. 30% in not that many years, right? And they continued to go on and just say, geez, like 12 million people will need to change their jobs by about 2030. And they break down all of the numbers and everything that goes through that. And the report's fantastic to give us an insight into what everybody is feeling, both from the top down to the front lines. And what we do now matters. So if we are going to keep harvesting our crop without thinking about using a tractor, if we're going to keep doing long division rather than wanting to use a calculator, we stand the chance of being outpaced and we stand the chance of needing to make a fundamental change that we may not be prepared for. Right. So that's the reason that I show up. And that's the reason I have these conversations. And I'm evolving too. It's painful for all of us if we let it be. Right? I just closed down a digital marketing agency that I was running with my business partner because it no longer made sense for us to continue to run that marketing agency the way we were doing it. People don't spend their marketing dollars the way they used to. A lot of what we did was copywriting. AI changed copywriting. Even with us adapting and having a hybrid copywriting model that came with AI, and we did it in integrity. We made it very clear. We brought our clients along for the ride. It wasn't enough. So... I do want everybody to be aware. I don't want anybody to fear. This isn't a fear mongering conversation. This isn't turning into a political like right. this is going crazy and everybody's going to lose their mind. But if you're willing to truly take advantage of what's right in front of you, there's a lot of benefit on the other side of that. And we have time. But if we sit and we wait and we know we should do something, but we don't, it's kind of like investing. It doesn't help you when you retire unless you start with the intention for it to help you when you retire. So we have to think more of it like, can we invest in our future, which actually is very close to like, again, if we're just talking about that date, we're going to blink and it's going to be 2030. So do we want to be having this conversation again then, or do we want to be on the other side of it? Exactly. It's going to seem as basic as having an email address. It's the same type of thing. Like, it just becomes second nature, right? My, my grandma made it all the way to the end without an email address ever in her life. <laughs> my grandparents did too. It was fantastic. <laughs> and barely, barely a cell phone. So <laughs> but I'm like, you're not going to find someone without an email address right now. You're just not. And it's going to be the same thing with some, type, like some equivalent of, of AI, right? And I wanted to go into this too, because a lot of people associate AI with chat GPT now, because I think we were introduced at, at, to your point for free, again, at a mass level to that tool that utilizes AI is how I would phrase it. But could you distinguish AI from chat GPT so that folks are not necessarily assuming one means the other, but also I would love to hear because you're on like the hundredth or something edition of sharing AI tools on Instagram. You guys, if you're not following Jim, he's at cause hacker. We'll put it in the, in the show notes, but you have so much value in these. I keep snipping all, I'm trying to catch all of them. I keep missing them like episodes. I'm like, wait a minute, we're on like the 55th edition. When, where was I? And I have to go back and look. And I, I go to almost all these sites just to see what they are. So I want to go into that, the AI versus chat, chat GPT, but the other tools available because they are mind blowing. I appreciate you. And I'll just, I'll try to make it as clear and lightly technical as possible because I know everybody comes to this from a different perspective. AI is a type of technology, just like the internet is a way of working with technology, right? The fact that we are able to record this together in different locations with high quality audio, video, all these things, we're using 
various pieces of technology to make it all work. The internet is one of them. AI is a way of working with data. There's so many ways to explain it, Shannon, but the way that I like to say it is AI is a way of working with data where you can retrieve that data with intelligence in a different format that, that also evolves. There's a lot of ways to say it, yeah. but I think really for this conversation, that's the best way I can express it. So let's unpack ChatGPT and AI just for a minute. So I'm gonna go a little technical, stick with me. Yeah. So ChatGPT is a piece of software. It is no different than Google Sheets. It is no different than Excel. ChatGPT, the software, uses the AI technology called GPT, which this company called OpenAI gave us. They actually released the API, which the API is the way that developers can work with other third-party services. So that way the software can give us an experiment. We can try it. So when we say it was a free preview, it was a piece of software that gave us an insight into what developers technically only should be able to do. So for the first time, we have this ability to work with AI, this type of technology that was only reserved for developers. That's one way to kind of really think about it. So is ChatGPT AI? Eh, yes and no, but it's more yes than no. All these other sites, to, to, to wrap this up, is that's what I love talking about, is there are so many other ways of using AI that, again, used to be reserved for only big developers and mainframe applications. Now, it's more and more available than ever. You can now create images totally from just typing out what you want. And generative AI, it's a, it's, a, it's a way of working with AI, will fundamentally create that brand new media from scratch. You can upload an audio clip of you speaking, and you can have AI model your entire voice, the recognition, the phrasing, the ups, the downs, the ums, the likes, everything, and type out what you want, and it'll express that exact thing. You can turn into robotic super superwoman shannon and have you know a podcast an hour with all the text that you've ever had there's an unlimited amount of ways that we can think about using ai but to be clear chat gpt is one way of accessing it mm -hmm. what i love doing is keeping up with all these different sites all these different opportunities and my commitment to my followers those that that follow along for all this ai stuff is every single day i post five different ai sites that do something fun that i've found that I want to share with everybody. And I went ahead and I built a searchable database on my personal site, jimcarter.me, because I wanted to find a place to put all this together. And I even took it a step further and I built my own chatbot. So you could talk to Robot Jim and it'll help you find an AI site, which is just fun. I'm experimenting with that. But these are all things that, I want to be clear, it was possible before we, we heard about ChatGPT, but it wasn't worth the efforts, unless you had a bigger business, unless you had somebody who could build an AI model, a database, put all this stuff together, maintain it, scale it, it, it just it didn't make practical sense. The practicality of it now is off the charts. And nearly every site that I post has a freemium, has, has a free test, you know, for five bucks for this one, you can do this thing. The voice modeling one I talked about, it's $5 a month and they have an 80% off coupon code for the first month. So for a dollar, <laughs> you, you, can, you can actually do this. And it's funny. I've, I yeah. started uploading audio clips of my friends and I would send them audio notes with their own voice and I freak them out. It's, that is so there, freaky. There's no limit to like what you can start to experiment with when you want to lean in. And, and that's why I love keeping up with it. It's so funny because like my, my brain goes, oh my God, that's scary. Like it, yeah, it's scary it, it in the sense that like, it is. Nothing, nothing is real anymore. Everything could be just, you know, fake Shannon talking. It's just funny because also as a podcast host, and I put out five episodes a day, when, let's say when GPT catches up to, you know, 2022 even, I'm like, you could tell it to do something in the voice of Shannon Weinstein, technically. Like at some point, it will, like, I will be known because of the content I produce, right? So it, it does freak me out a little bit. It's also, it's exciting, but it's also like, whoa, it just, it reminds you of the power of it as well. Like just how far that it can go. And, and I love that you mentioned all these different sites and what they can do. It's just, it really is mind blowing. Just some of the examples from the image generation to the voice generation. It's unreal. It is. And I think another really good example here is think about how the music industry evolved, right? When everything started with radio, 
or let's just talk about, you know, go way back. We went from vinyl to A track to CD to Laserdisc to digital to MP3 to streaming, right? So if we, if we just think about that, to your point, that was iteration and growth over a long period of time. For those of us, because you already threw it out there talking about dial up and all that, <laughs> yeah. who remembers Napster, right? Yeah. Now, the ethics of that aside, what it did is it completely flipped that industry on its head. Yes. It, it polarized. And think about, remember, you remember that? Remember all of the, the hate and the, the rage of artists, you know, like, oh, my God, this is going to destroy everything. Mm-hmm. Well, now look at where we are with something like Spotify and Apple Music and Tidal. It's actually given way to the industry evolving for the better. And better is relative. I'm, I'm right. not an artist that relies on royalties. So, you know, I, I digress. But the evolution of it and the way technology allows us to be able to work with that is fantastic. So one could say, rather than discovering an artist and having to go to a record store and actually buy a vinyl and ha- go home and play it and then risk scratching it and then being like, well, I'm never going to listen to that again. Now you can find social discovery because it's as easy as paying a monthly subscription and doing it. So think about what that will do with how AI can change industries, complete industries, flip them on their head because it finally makes it so much more accessible. And, and if we think about it like that, I think that gives way to all the brilliant minds who want to lean in, who want to try some things. I decided I was going to build my own chatbot and I didn't write a line of code to do it. And I'm the retired software engineer. And I did that by design. I wrote an entire chatbot using AI technology with zero code. It's a massive prompt. The prompt is the way of giving AI instructions. And it's a database of information. So when I publish a new AI site, it updates the database, the model grows, and the prompt persists. And it just continues to grow. So as people come in and chat, It'll welcome them back when it knows it's been there before. It'll say, hey, did you use that last site that I shared with you? How did it work? Do you need another recommendation? It starts to understand because I've trained it that way. And I did it by typing words, plain English. And when we think, wow, what else is possible? Yeah. That's the way that I want everybody to really pull this is, all right, well, if if you can do that by not having to write a line of code, don't have to hire a dev team, what's possible for me? And that's why I post these sites. That's why I talk about this all the time. That's why I'm so passionate about it is because I see what it can do for not just the good of humanity, but let's be honest, just bring us some more cash, keep it in our pockets to to have some more fun, have more time with the family, whatever it is. It's doing that for me. And I'm trying to be the example to just show this is how simple it can be. I love that. And I see the functionality of it in kind of two, if I had to give it two categories, it's doing what we do now better, faster right? For the, for the example, like your chatbot, right? I could easily have it do, if I wanted to do, build that on my own, build some type of database, I could build like a wiki, for example, and I could have it write for me to go into the wiki. But, and that's where a lot of people stop is that they, they start with what am I already doing and how can I do it with the AI? But then the next level is, how does the AI change fundamentally what I am doing? Because we could live in the world where I'm writing a wiki or a blog or whatever, and I'm not saying that is outdated or whatever, but you can do that. But you're going to the next level and saying, wait a second, if I want to share information on the internet right now and I want people to have access to it, you're going the next step and saying, I'm going to build a chat bot, which is a new, newer for most people type of way of interacting as opposed to say a blog or something static they can read. So I, I think there's, the, there's both of those things that we've talked about, which is doing what we do better, but changing what we're doing, I think is where it gets really interesting. And that's also, that's where I get overwhelmed is going, this can do anything. I have to just completely, whatever I was going to have it do, I have to go, what if I just don't do that thing at all and I do something else and it, it does all of it for me? Like it's mind blowing. Yeah. Like why not have the robot do the thing because now it's attainable. Mm-hmm. It is fractions of pennies to, to be able to use this technology. It's a land grab. So all the sites, all the developers, they're all trying to get users. So they're going to go above and beyond. I mean, one of my pro tips is if you're thinking about using an AI tool, see if they've got venture funding. 
That means that they've got a big enough audience. They've got someone with big pockets that's backing them. And it's likely going to be free because they got venture funding. So it's one more ability for them to be able to persist a little bit longer. But let's, let's really customize that for this audience, right? Like I know there's a lot of people listening that are financial professionals. They, you guys work in Google Sheets and Excel. So what are some of the big things that you're always doing in Sheets and Excel? Well, you're likely always working with data, <laughs> right? So did you know that there is a way to plug in the GPT AI API into Google Sheets or to Excel? There, there are plugins and extensions that will actually take that functionality and get it directly into your Sheets. And just by paying, again, fractions of pennies to be able to use this tech, you can take information and rather than manually writing a function and putting it and drawing everything out, you can just tell GPT to fill it and it'll do it and it'll make sense of it. You can tell it to create a table. You can tell it to format, to extract, to fill, to map, to translate, to edit, all these things that why not? Why, why wouldn't you want to feel superhuman and be able to grow and to do all these things? Again, if you love what you do and you know you're great at it, it's not cheating. It's using a fast track, right? It's the ability to jump into that carpool lane and just get there faster. And let's take it a step further. I write functions in Google Sheets, you know, pretty much every time I get in there and I want to do something a little bit more creative. I'm pretty sure everybody listening here has at one point written a function <laughs> in Google Sheets or Excel. Did you know that there's an AI tool that you can type in plain language what you want it to do and it will write the whole function for you? It's, it could be that simple. So you text box on a website. I think, oh, what's it called? I think it's called sheetformula.com. Now, yeah, I remember that. You can go in and you can say some columns A through J except for B and plot it into D5 and take the value from sheet called, quote, cash flow, unquote, J7 and apply it to, I'm making all this up. Yeah, no, I, I'm already like practically applying this and going, and I've just lost a bunch of people, but that's like, that's <laughs> unbelievable. It, it's what's there. And the best and the coolest part about it too, is it'll also, you can flip that. You can take a crazy complicated formula that maybe you found online or you were like, why isn't this working? And you can reverse it and you can have it deconstructed and explain the formula in plain English. Wow. So it's really that idea of like, God, we do have a freaking magic wand in some ways, in yeah. some applications. So why don't you want to use it? And when you realize you have these abilities that can be tailored to what you do, all you have to do is just want to experiment with it and it'll change everything for you. Yeah. It, it's a lack of awareness of the capability, right? So you just described that and I'm like, I didn't know you could do that because literally everything's possible now. So now it's just, you can pull anything out and go, yeah, that's real now. And, and that's crazy to me, but it's also, I never had a pain point for how I do things now. I think we just have a toleration, right? Of yeah, this is how yeah, it's done. Right. And I never, th I, I usually, we introduce new technology when we feel a sense of a pain point in the process and we want to solve for it. What this is enabling us to do is not even wait for the pain point <laughs> or we don't realize we're in a pain point, right? It's an awareness right. and perspective thing, but like you would have said, when you just described that, I'm going, I never had any problems with my formulas. Like I'll just Google how to write the formula or I'll figure it out. And I'm going, that 15 minutes turns into 15 seconds. Like it really does add up and it really does matter, even though I never would have quote unquote ordered that on a menu mm -hmm. and said like, I want that, right? Because I never it never occurred to me that was possible. So I think a big part of this process is making yourself aware of what the capabilities are because we're unintentionally holding ourselves back by not exploring it, would you say? I, I would. And the longer that we are resistant to it, those that aren't will just continue to, like we talked about, retain more value, lower their overhead, grow faster, be able to take more clients. It's, again, it's not a fear-mongering conversation. It's an awareness conversation. So if one thing that I said makes you more aware of what's possible, well, now the question is just what are you going to do with it? Right, because I now use AI tools in almost everything that I do. Every Zoom recording, I use an AI note taker. 
every marketing email, I have it help me get the draft built, but not just because I want it to do it for me, because I've taken the time to train AI. And by, again, by training, I don't mean writing code. I mean, copying and pasting past work that I love, that I wrote into it and saying, learn this, learn this whole business, learn the writing style, understand when I use two exclamation points and why I never use an emoji unless there's a dad joke. And it will. And then I can have it draft something and it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, one thing that you said earlier, Shannon, is like that idea of, well, could it be faster, better? You know, that word better, that's tricky, right? Because that's almost like hiring an employee. For those of us that have ever hired, you know that you go into it with all of the, the hopes and dreams that that person is going to be able to provide better output than you can at a faster rate, which is why you want to pay them for it. And you might go in with expectations and they may fall short or maybe realize you just need more time for them to pick up on it. Well, why can't GPT be an experimental employee that doesn't ask for paid time off, doesn't ask for raises? If you say it didn't do it the way you want, it'll say, sorry, let's try again. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with using tech to try. And I never condone copying and pasting stuff from ChatGPT and just hitting publish. I, I don't do that. And I don't want anybody to do that. But if it's no different than taking the time to have somebody else draft it for you and you give the same review, well, why not do it yourself? Or why not come up with a system to do it for you? And now the next time you have to send a 10-part email sequence and you're just like, ugh, I don't have time to write this thing. Actually, I would challenge you, yeah, you do. When you do it with something like this where you take the time and say, learn my business, learn my writing style, learn my goals for what I want, give me an outline. And if you don't like points or, you know, emails three and seven, say, I don't like emails three and seven. Give me two more ideas. Oh, I like those. Switch this order. Great. Let's start at the top and then give it a draft. Give it feedback. Remember, AI is powerful because it learns just like your Netflix algorithm. If you start yeah. watching a whole lot of Gilmore Girls, well, guess what you're going to get a lot of recommendations for? Why do you think I know that? Because my kids use my profile all the damn time. <laughs> Don't get me started on like the Amazon algorithm and everything else. When somebody searches for that one thing, it just throws everything off. So yep. it's no different, but it actually, it absolutely has the potential to add so much more value because you can't write marketing emails from your Netflix algorithm, <laughs> right? Now think of the power of what you get from there and the value that might bring into your life and think about what that can bring to your business. 100% agree. And, and you mentioned too, it's like having an employee personally, this little... I, I don't know about anyone else listening, but I talk to it like a person. I actually, oh, yeah. I write to it and I say, would, would you please mind doing this for me? Like I actually soften it really. I don't, I don't do commands. I actually have this like kind of deep seated belief that the more polite I am to it, the better the output's going to be. Like, it's almost like a, a customer service yeah. person where I go, if I'm, totally. if I'm a lot more elaborate and nicer and try to explain this to them, my prompts are very, very long in chat GPT because I tried to explain all the details that they would need to know as though I were writing a letter to someone to do this for me and they're not allowed to talk to me. And I'm like, how much detail can I give it? And I find that works really well, but gosh, it's going to, it's, you know how we feel, like you said, that like with ads and the algorithms, it feels like, wow, they're reading my mind. It's going to do the same thing and it's already happening. So I, I just love It's already this. happening. And yeah. I love this conversation, yep. Jim. Where, what are the resources? I know you have a newsletter you've mentioned, so I want you to, to mention that, but what are the resources people can use to learn more about this now that they're going, damn, I got to learn more? Yeah. Well, first of all, I mean, this is the, if not one of the biggest trending topics on the internet right now. So if you're just curious, I mean, YouTube University, hop over there, AI for fill in the blank. And you're going to find creators like me who are just passionate about this and talking about it. And if anything, just follow along, watch, see what somebody's doing. Because somebody could have mentioned just what I did about the whole, did you know you can use AI to create sheets for or formulas for your sheets? And he's like, no, I didn't. Show me, right? So just be curious. Just, just lean in. It doesn't have to be my content. But if the way I show up and the way I talk about this resonates, oh, this is one of the reasons that I do post every single day about some really fun AI tools that I find, like you talked about. You mentioned I'm at Cause Hacker on all the socials, LinkedIn, Instagram, which is now X, which we're still figuring out what to call tweets. I have no idea. And threads and all that stuff. So I just, I try to get information out there um, as broadly as possible. 
And then I have a searchable index and that chatbot on my site at jimcarter.me. Feel free to check that out. You can search for something that you're thinking about. You can chat with the bot. Share, share feedback with me, please. Like tag me on stuff because I'm just, I'm growing and I'm learning with it too. And at the end of the day, if, you, if you're really more curious about it, I would love you to just join the, the newsletter. I love writing about these topics. It's getting me back to my commitment to really being a thought leader and, and, and enjoying the process. And you better believe that AI is part of that process, right? And I enjoy writing my AI newsletter with AI every single week. And I'm fully transparent about it. Call it what you want. I call it productivity. <laughs> and that makes way for me to open really good conversations and get people thinking. But the reason that you might want to be on that newsletter is it's for small businesses. I take the time to really correlate all the topics with how it can affect and what it can do for small businesses. So I throw a little brain emoji on all of the key topics and I say, this is why this matters for you. So everybody on that, on that list is a, is a true small business. They're an entrepreneur. They're, they're trying to find ways to use this to do more with it. And I just, I would just say, start there, start with, there's so much free content, so much open-ended just knowledge about this as it evolves. But at the end of the day, if you know this is for you and you want to implement it, not only do I coach and I consult on this both in group form and one-on-one, -on -one, but I actually do start working with companies um, in a very, very limited capacity where I actually do implement this for them. So if you feel like something like that's for you on my site, there's a big book a call button. Feel free to grab some time with me and I'd love to hear about the business and you know see how I can help you really take advantage of this. Yeah. And like Jim said, so many resources at our fingertips, including the tool itself, which is just amazing. Jim, thank you so much for hopping on the show today and spending your time to educate our audience and to inspire them in taking action on AI. I know this is going to be such a, such a powerful episode for them. I appreciate you having me. And thank you for thank you for the invite, not just for welcoming me on the show. I'm grateful to have you as such a good friend, Shannon, but for being a thought leader in what you do and wanting to have this conversation with the audience. It's it would be easy to gloss over this because it's complicated. It might lose people, but it's such an important one. And I just really hope if there was one thing anybody can take away, it's just be willing to experiment, try some stuff. And you never know what's on the other side of leaning into it. Totally agree. Perfect way to close things out, Jim. Thank you so much. Thank you too. I can't believe how many episodes we've released of Keep What You Earn. There are literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in tax savings contained in our episode library. And there are so many topics that we cover. To make it easier to find more of what you need right now, we actually created a custom curated playlist just for you. That's right, a playlist of value-packed episodes that you're looking for based on your goals right now in your business. Whether you're making your first sale, trying to strategize your taxes, or you're scaling your team, there is something here for everyone. Check out the podcast playlist generator now using the link in the show notes and explore your custom playlist. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a rating and review on your podcast platform. This small action goes a long way for podcasters to get our message heard by more business owners just like you. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to information about our guests and ways to get in touch with me. We'll see you on the next episode.